Hello, it's Mo Willems, and it's Doodle Lunchtime. I just took a number 17 and I put it on its side and I kind of made it a dinosaur race car. So that's a little doodle for you. Um, it's good to be with you here again for our second day. We're going to talk about some books and we're going to do some more doodling and stuff. And I have to admit, the last couple days been a little nervous and I don't know if you've been a little bit nervous too but that's okay and sometimes when you're nervous you, you make little mistakes or things like that so I realized that yesterday on March 16th after we drew the pigeon I did not ask you to come up with pigeon ideas of your own your own story so instead of don't let the pigeon drive the bus I've gotten people have written me, you know, don't let the pigeon operate the catapult, or uh, don't let the pigeon jump too high, or don't let the pigeon make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So if you're looking for something to do this afternoon, I really encourage you to do that, to make up your own pigeon story and maybe make a cover and figure out what the book is about and then have a reading. Read it to your family or to whoever is at home or maybe like this via a screen or the internet. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about Elephant and Piggy and this book, Waiting is Not Easy. Yeah, because we're, we're going to do a lot of waiting for the next couple weeks. And this turns out to be one of my favorite Elephant and Piggy books. And I didn't think a lot of people were going to like it when I wrote it. It was really something I thought for me, but it turned out that they did. And if you don't know what the story is about, it's about Gerald, who doesn't like waiting. And Piggy has a surprise, and they have to wait all day and into the night. Well, I looked in my old notebooks. Remember yesterday I showed you guys some of my notebooks? I looked in my old notebooks, and I found some of the original ideas that I wrote down in between October 2012 and March 2013, which is a long time ago. And it's kind of fun to see, because sometimes people say, well, you know, where do your stories come from? Or how do you create your stories? Well, you don't always start at the beginning, and you, you don't always start at the end, and you don't always start in the middle. Every book is a little bit different. So, Sometimes just make drawings and try and figure out what's going on and put these characters into a position. And I made this little drawing. I don't know if you can see. It's Piggy holding a flashlight because I used to like to hold a flashlight up to my face. And then I realized that there's something about darkness. And I thought, how does Gerald feel about the dark? Well, Gerald does not like the dark. And then I thought, boy, it might be fun to do a book with just eyeballs and see what they're like with their word bubbles and just their eyes. And then maybe every now and then a little flashlight. Well, I don't know that that was enough for a story. That was enough sort of as an idea. So I kept playing and then I came up with this little drawing of Bat the Bat and Gerald. And Gerald says, where is Piggy visiting her grandmother? I'm filling in. I thought that was really funny that instead of Piggy for an adventure, you would just have Bat, and Bat would hang out and do Piggy things. And then I realized, boy, Gerald would really not like waiting for Piggy. And when I thought, went back to thinking about darkness and nighttime, my favorite thing at night are all these different stars. Now it started to come together. The idea of waiting and stars at the end. I wrote lots and lots of lines and different dialogue, and I kind of came up at the end first for this book. For a while, the title was going to be, I Cannot Wait. It was a pretty angry title, right? And I thought it was funny to have Gerald really, really angry and Piggy really, really mellow. But then I realized that it's maybe a little bit more universal to say waiting is not easy. And then the fun began. I got to write all these different lines and make these drawings of Gerald groaning and different poses. Oh, the groaning and the waiting and how hard that was be. And then I was ready for this, which is sort of crazy. It's really hard to see. 
Each one of those squares represents two pages like this. And like any book is like a good song, it needs to have a rhythm. And so here I am figuring out the rhythm of the story, what's happening from page to page, what the dialogue is going to be, and moving things around so that it all fits within 64 surfaces, which is if you include the cover and the end papers, every one of these books is 64 surfaces. We'll talk maybe later about why that number 64 is so important. Well then, I just kept writing and writing until it was time to do my first dummy. Would you like to see what that looks like? Well, fortunately, if you remember in my studio, I have all of the drawings, well, most of the drawings of all of my books. Why don't we come in and go to the elephant and piggy section and see what we can find. All right. So we're lucky. This is the elephant and piggy section. And when I built this, I thought, oh, there was one drawer for every book. Because I didn't think I was ever going to write as many books as I did. But if you take a look here, oh, man, did I make a lot of elephant and piggy books. I mean, some of my friends made some elephant and piggy like reading books, and there's some unlimited squirrels books. So I had to double and quadruple up. Let's see what we got. E and P. This is 20, so it's a little bit towards the end. Here we go. It says E and P number 21, 22, Frog Waiting. And then this is Nap and Slop. Let's take this out. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so these are the dummies, what they look like for an elephant and piggy book. Unfortunately, I think the dummy for Waiting is Not Easy isn't in exhibit right now. So we'll look at this dummy just to give you a sense of what it's like. I really like Slop. You see, those are the days that I made the drawings and then that entered stamp is the day that I made the blues and I'll explain to you later what the blues are. It's all of the pacing and the very rough posing much like you're gonna see in the final book. And I might make five of these drawings and then throw them away and start over or that first drawing may work well or I may go back and revise it. See those flies in the red? That's a revision, and I play around until I think this is worth showing to my editor. And then we may change some of the lines, you see, or some of the drawings. This is the first time, I remember, when Gerald tries the slop and goes all crazy to see just what it would look like with some various bright colors. Anyway, once I've done that, I'm ready for the blues, which is how you would animate in when you animate, you start with a blue pencil. So the first thing I do is I have a size chart. So there's Gerald and Piggy as they were in 2013. As they get older, their ears sort of sagged or they got bigger. But really, by around here, by around book 20, that's about what they look like. And so now I use that when I draw to make sure that they stay the right size. All right? And I do all of these blue drawings. You can see... I erase a lot because a pencil has an eraser. And so I'm trying to make sure the eyes are right. I'm trying to make sure that the legs are the right size or how I want the posing. And then after that, I can make these finals. Now that one is sort of turned up. So here you go. You can see that. It's a wrapped up blue. And that's the final. They look, they look pretty similar. Piggy's smile is a little bit different. Piggy's eyes are a little bit different, but Gerald looks pretty close. And that, so all of these originals look. And in that star shot, they stand on a background that's gray, so I did that. It's a separate level, and those are all the surfaces labeled. So this is the title page, surface 0405. I made that on the 22nd of February in 2013. These are the big, silly groans. And the reason that I've got these two lines here is that is called the gutter. 
in between the pages, there's space. So I want to make sure that the G and the R don't get lost in that. And this is going to be done digitally as a typeset. So I just draw it in red so that people know at the publishing house that they're going to have to build those letters to fit in to look like that. And see, it says new. So it probably was a second or third draft. My editor said, well, you could probably do a little better. And then I did do it. Oh, look, here's the final for that. With that grown bubble, because that bubble is on another one. So there we go. Let me put these back. That's what that book looks like, what all the steps are in that book. All right, shall we go sit back down? Okay. It's my old notebook. Got a whole stack of them. Maybe later, later I'll show you tens of years of these. Just a lot. Wow. All right. I think it's time to teach you guys how to draw something. So if you don't have paper and pencil, uh, or particularly a pencil with an eraser for this particular drawing, why don't you do me a favor and pause. All right, let you pause and go into another room and go get yourself some pencils and uh, some paper. And you want to make sure that this time pencil has an eraser, right? Okay, pausing, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. All right, you got it? Come back. Okay, now press play and let's draw. So this time, I'm going to use a pencil and eraser. I'm going to teach you guys how to draw Gerald. And I think on the website, we're going to have something like this that you can print out later if you want to make sure and see. Yesterday, we drew the pigeon. And this is the explanation. Now, this is the official explanation. It doesn't mean I'm going to do it exactly the same, because I may do an unofficial Gerald. First thing you're going to do is you're going to draw. I'm going to do it a little thicker, because I don't think it's going to read as much. A number seven, like the seven in March 17th. All right? Now we're going to draw next to it a little, like a like a little sibling seven, right? This is the, the younger seven. It's a little smaller, and we're going out on a seven play date. There we go. Now, we're going to draw a circle all around that. Now look. See how that circle went through there? That's okay, because this is what my eraser is for. I'm going to take my eraser and get rid of that line. Because whatever, there's a line on top like that, that's how you know that it's on top. If you can clear out that little line, then one thing is on top of the other. So right now, these sevens are above this big circle. Now, what about number eight? That's no fair. The seven got to go twice. Well, we're going to take a number eight, and we're going to hit it on the side and have it fall down right here. Number eight. Oops. Number eight fell down. We're going to do two strings, two little arms sticking out for it. All right? That's right, starting to look a little bit like Gerald. So now you can take the drawing and put it upside down if it's easier. And off of here, do sort of half of a letter U. A letter U until it hits there. And then a letter U until it hits there. All right. Now, straight line across, from side to side. See how I angled it a little? It makes that ear feel a little bit more cool. And then I'm going to do another letter U here, small letter U. And now, the letter U here. I think Gerald is happy to see me. I'm going to have Gerald smile. And now, the most important part, as we said last time, is where the eyes go. If it looks down, it has a different feeling if it looks up. I am going to have Gerald look up at me. Because I think Gerald is happy that I drew him. 
And then I'm going to write my name so that everybody knows that I made this drawing. There you go. Know, that's my Gerald. Can you hold up your Gerald? I'd like to see that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Doesn't look exactly like mine. It looks kind of exactly like yours, which is really awesome. And you see, again, the eraser is so important. If you ever make a drawing or you write a line or you do something and you're like, oh, that's not how I wanted it to go. That's all right. There's an eraser. And if you don't have one of those erasers, you probably have one on one of your pencils. Here. This is one of those blue pencils I was talking about earlier that I do my elephant and piggy drawings with. And it's got an eraser. And see how that eraser is all kind of erased off? That's because I spend pretty much most of my day erasing different lines. So that was kind of fun. All right. You know what I forgot to do? I think I told you earlier, I forgot to say, hey, make your own pigeon stories and whatnot. So now, maybe today, if you don't have anything to do or you're trying to figure out what to do, you can come up with your own Elephant and Piggy adventures. Remember, we decided that Elephant Gerald doesn't like the dark, and that became this story, right? Waiting is not easy. Maybe there's something that Gerald really, really likes, or maybe there's something Gerald is afraid of, or maybe there's something that Gerald really wants to tell someone that Gerald never has. Whatever that is, that could be the idea for a story. So, now, question time. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to organize stuff and I'll be able to answer and look at some of your mail that you're sending as email or some of the drawings that you're sending. Today, I'm going to read some mail that was sent to my publisher and try and answer some questions that go on the mail. So this a real letter from someone named Clayton. Dear Mo Willems, I really like your books, and the books, the word books has two eyeballs in it. It's really funny. My name is Clayton. I am eight years, and your books make me laugh. Thank you, Clayton. I'm really happy that your books make me laugh. How are you doing? <sighs> I'm a little nervous, Clayton. I'm a little nervous, but... I feel like I have a lot of love in my life and I feel like I'm able to do good things. And I'm so glad that I get to draw with all these kids all over the country. So a little nervous, but I think I'm doing okay. How many book have you written? And then again, the book has two eyeballs in it. Well, I've written a lot, a lot of books. I kind of guess the question you have is really how many have you published? Well, I've published a lot of books also. I've published, I think right now, about 60 books. Yeah, which is why all these shelves need to have multiple books in them. I just keep making books. So you better watch out because I'm probably going to be working on another book pretty soon and that'll be 61. Thank you, Clayton. Good story. Good letter. Let's see, this is a letter Oh my goodness, Connor, Connor wrote their phone number. Connor, I'm not gonna put that on the screen. Connor wrote a number, uh, a letter, and then it looks like one of Connor's parents also wrote the words, but I'm gonna read Connor's first. It says, Mo Willems, correctly spelled, thank you, Connor, is the best. He makes the good books. He by Connor. Wow, goodest books. Thank you, Connor. Let's see what it says. Um, my favorite book is Happy Pig Day. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Connor. That's pretty great. It is very funny. It makes me laugh. I read it today with my big brother, partner, and my mom. That is awesome. Do you ever come to Minnesota? I have been to Minnesota. I don't think I'm going to be in Minnesota in the near future, not in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I don't go to Minnesota that often, but I really, really like Minnesota. And I will let you know that my nephew, whose name is Lee, lives in Minnesota right now. So if you meet someone named Lee, you can say, are you my nephew? Are you Mo's nephew? And if they say yes, then say hi, I'm Connor. Excellent. 
All right, last little letter. Hmm. This is a nice one. It has a little drawing. And it says, now this letter was written a long time ago. Sometimes if you send me a letter, it takes a long time to get to the publisher. And then somehow it, uh, it gets lost. And then we have to write the, the thank you. And then that has to go in the mail. So sometimes it takes a long, long time. So if you've written me a letter and you haven't heard back yet, I'm sorry, but you're probably an answer is coming soon. So this one is from a long time ago. Dear Mo Willems, thank you for writing the book, Waiting is Not Easy. Wow. This is from Kinsey. How did Kinsey know? I love Piggy and Gerald books. It's so funny. Some people call them Elephant and Piggy. Some people call them Gerald and Piggy. And some people call them Piggy and Gerald. I never know why people do that. It's really cool that they say it their own way. I like when Gerald says, waiting is not easy. I like when Gerald says, we've been waiting for the whole day. Why does Gerald have glasses? Hmm. Why does Gerald have glasses? Let me think. Why does Gerald have glasses? Does Gerald remind me of anybody I know or see when I look at myself in the mirror. I will tell you why Gerald has glasses. Because Gerald is nervous and Gerald needs things. Now you notice the one thing about Elephant and Piggy that your teachers do not say is that they're pretty naked. They're very naked Elephant and Piggy because they're cartoon characters. And Piggy, because Piggy is so mellow and so pure, Piggy doesn't need anything extra. But Gerald is nervous, so I gave Gerald glasses so that he would have something to try to hide behind. That is why. Your friend, Kinsey. And then it says, I could be a star in a Piggy and Gerald book. That's right. One that you write. So now that you guys know how to draw Gerald, you could create a book called Elephant and Piggy and Me. And the three of you guys could all go out on an adventure. That's a great letter. I really like that letter. All right. We're going to do a final doodle. And let's see here. Pause, just in case you need to get more paper. Is there more paper? Your paper pencil? Okay, now this time, while we're pausing, I want you to get two different colored pencils or crayons or markers, because we're going to do a special type of doodle with two colors. Okay? Okay, pause, pause, you got it? I'm so close. Okay. Play. All right, I'm going to get my paper. And this is a little game I do sometimes. It's a letter game. So sometimes it's hard to think about what to draw. You're like, oh, I don't know what to draw. I can't come up with anything to draw. There's always something to draw. So sometimes what I do is I take a letter that I know like this. It's a letter that I'm very familiar with. It's one of my 20, top 26 letters. It's letter F. And I sometimes I use that word, that letter in words like friend, something like that. And what I do is I take this letter F and then I try and turn it. That was in red. I now take a gray crayon or marker. And I'm going to try and turn that F to another drawing. Mm, see, like it could be a dinosaur with teeth, right? That would be the mouth. Um, it could be a chair that leans back. I don't know, see what you're going to do. But don't be afraid to move the drawing around to see if there are other things that that letter F could be. Oh, you know what? I think I've got some ideas. This is what I'm
grab that red again. Grab that red. Is that the red? Yeah. Make a sign. Oh, this is the orange. Oh well. Make a sign that we can look. It's an F fire truck. Right? I'm gonna sign my name right here. Mo, so that I know I did it. And I wonder what you made with your F. I wonder what kind of different drawings you did. Well, that's it for today's lunch doodle. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for drawing. And just because we're done, that doesn't mean that you have to stop drawing. You can keep drawing and maybe do a number and turn that into something or just a squiggle or another letter. Okay? Well, until tomorrow, this is Mo Willem saying, have a good day.